Hello and welcome to HyperDog Digital. This is Scott. It's time to do our full review on the Sentio Superbook. A while back I did a first impressions video on this and I had been using it throughout that time. And I also did finally get the update to the Sentio desktop, which also updated the firmware on the Superbook itself. Uh, that did delay my review a couple of weeks at least as I wanted to make sure that that uh, firmware was was actually installed and the, the update to the software was installed to see if it would fix any of the problems that a lot of people have been having and that myself have been having. Before I do get started there were a few points I wanted to clarify from my previous video that was inaccurate on my part. First, this is not a different OS. This is a launcher that runs on the phone and is then mirrored to the screen on the Superbook. It can then be utilized by the keyboard, trackpad, etc. of the Superbook itself. Number two, I had mentioned that you could get Apple device cables for use with the Superbook. That was incorrect. This is currently not compatible with any Apple products. You cannot get any cables from Sentio for an Apple device. Third and finally, I wanted to clarify the price. The base price through crowdfunding when I ordered it was $99, as I mentioned previously. However, I did add on a few perks that increased the overall price of the unit that I received, as well as additional cost of shipping. In the end, my cost was roughly $175 total. All right, so now it's time to go ahead and go over uh, the, uh, the Superbook itself. I am going to go over some of the same information I went through in the first video. I assume there will be some people that didn't get to see the first impressions, so I felt it was worthwhile to go over some of that basic information again. So this is the Superbook right here. It also came with this fancy travel sleeve, a charging cable, and the USB Type-C to USB Type-C cable that is used to connect my phone to the Superbook. The travel sleeve is actually rather durable and should protect the device fairly well. It does have a separate pocket inside where you can uh, put uh, your, your cables uh, or something like that, maybe a few papers, but really not much else. Uh, you are not going to be able to store the charging cable in here, so you'll have to carry that separately if you do want to take that with you as well. The cable here is, is pretty standard and different variations are available depending on the type of phone you're using. In my case, I'm using the Galaxy S8 Plus, so the Type-C to Type-C was required. I'm not sure if you can see it on the camera there, but you do actually have a white end and a black end, and that is important later, which we'll discuss when we get to that point. Now on the actual Superbook itself. Well, this is it right here. Uh, the device uh, you can see is fairly small, all plastic. It's got a fair amount of weight to it, more than I would expect for something that is really just a battery screen and keyboard, but it's not terribly bad. The plastic makes up the case. Uh, it doesn't feel very durable to me. You can actually hear a lot of creaking uh, when handling the device, opening it, just kind of moving it around. But this generally indicates poor construction and or poor materials. However, I've used this for the last you know, almost a month or so. It hasn't cracked, hasn't uh, you know, shown any damage or anything like that, and it's been beat up fairly well. So even though it feels like it's not too durable, uh, it, it actually has held up fairly well at this point. All right, the ports, we'll take, go ahead and take a look at the ports on here. Uh, we have the charging port here standard USB port, a USB Type-C port. There are no other ports on the other side, on the back, or the front. That is the only ports that you got on this entire thing here. So if you do need more ports, you're going to have to get some kind of USB bus or other device, uh, or other adapter or something like that, because uh, that is all you got. If we open it up here, you can see there is no camera. No camera up here on the bottom or anything like that. There's no camera on the back of the screen. So if you do want a camera, you're going to be using the camera on your phone, which is fine for the most part. Uh, the screen is 11.6 inches. You have a fairly standard keyboard on here. There's small, a few keys are a little bit smaller than normal, but for the most part, it's a, it's a standard standard size keyboard. Uh, the uh, there you got your regular trackpad and some indicator lights right up here that will tell you about power, battery level, so on and so forth. One of the perks that I did add on to mine was the backlit keyboard. 
I'm not sure if you can really see it on there too well, but uh, it is backlit and it does look very nice. The screen is also of the 1080p variety, which was another perk. Both of these, of course, are optional, so may not be on all devices. I will mention that I saw on the Slack channel that they were upgrading all the remaining orders to the 1080p version. This is being done as a bit of compensation for the severe delays in shipment for some of the models. Uh, this is just what I read, so please don't take it as gospel. I recommend you reach out and find out for, your, for, for yourself if your particular order is one that's going to be upgraded or not. And that's really all there is to it, to the actual device itself. There's not a whole lot to it. It's pretty simple, and that's by design. Uh, so that's uh, that's really about all we got. So let's uh, let's get into uh, just just using it. Okay, so let's get into using the Superbook. First, you have to make sure it is charged up. There is a battery inside that provides roughly eight hours of battery life. The bonus of this is that it will also charge your phone while it is connected to the Superbook. Now, several people have mentioned that this function does not work on their Superbook, but I have never had a problem with this feature myself. Uh, there was a recent firmware upgrade, as I had mentioned before, that was supposed to address this issue, so hopefully it did fix the problem for the people who were having this particular issue. Opening the Superbook turns this device on. There is a power key on the keyboard, which is right there. But this really works more like a sleep button. There is no actual power button anywhere on the device. Of course, closing the screen will also put it back to sleep, power it off, whatever. It's currently indicating by this bouncing screen here that it is awaiting the phone to connect. So at this point, you can plug your phone into the Superbook using the included cable, which is right here. Making sure that the white side of the cable plugs into the Superbook and the black side plugs into your phone. And when I'm referencing that here, you can see this is the cable that I got. This is the white side here. This is the black one. The white plugs into the Superbook. The black plugs into your phone. Plugging them in the opposite direction will not work. When you plug everything into your phone, it will automatically initialize the DisplayLink software as well as the Sentio desktop launcher. There are some steps you may need to go through for initial setup, but once that's complete, it should automatically load subsequent connections. So let's go ahead and plug it in and see what we got. Here's my phone here. Mm -hmm. Here's the cable. We want to make sure we have it unlocked. And let's plug it in. There we go. So this is the Santio desktop. As you can see, it presents you with a horizontal layout with various icons along the top of the desktop, an application bar on the bottom which holds your most recent applications. You can also drag and drop icons down here if you desire. In the lower right, you have several notification icons, which we'll bring up here for you to take a look at right there. Now these notification icons uh, can be manipulated uh, in, in to change the different settings. In particular, there is a settings icon. In here you have the option of making changes to Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, sound, etc. You can also enter into the Sentio settings, which allows you to modify how the launcher interacts with your phone when you initiate the application. Now some of these currently need to be enabled via some manual ADB lines, which is provided on the Sentio website. This was fairly simple for me, but if you're not familiar with ADB, it may be a bit more of a problem for you to complete. They have some pretty good instructions on the website, so it should help most people get through it. Again, this allows you to make several changes to the launcher's behavior, such as how it launches, recent apps, alt-tab usage, DPI settings, and so on. The desktop itself works similar to most GUI-driven desktops that you might find in Windows or Linux. You can grab icons and move them around. You can pull them out of the, the app list here and place them on the desktop. The keyboard has several special function keys, including your standard Android buttons, back, home, and recent apps, which are right up here. You also have several environmental buttons here, such as your brightness, your contrast, your volume, so on and so forth. And that is really the 30,000 foot view of the Sentio Superbook. Overall, it's not too bad, but let's next talk about what works and what doesn't work. 
Okay, so before we get started to actually look at the, uh, the Sentio desktop software, I did want to show one thing here, because I did get asked this uh, in the comments for the, for the last video, uh, that uh, I am actually charging while connected on here. So if I go in here to battery information, should be able to see there that I am actually charging. I am connected to Sentio desktop right there. All right. Okay, so performance with the Superbook is overall pretty good. This, of course, will vary depending on the phone you're using, and since you're using your phone, if your phone starts to lag, so will your Superbook. When your phone is fast and snappy, your Superbook will also be fast and snappy. I was actually surprised to find that I could play games uh, really good on this on this guy. Uh, they came across really good. The graphics were good. Um, playing games was actually uh, really good. Like I said, the only problem being the on-screen buttons don't always translate to the keyboard buttons. So sometimes arrow keys will work, but for the most part you end up using your phone as a controller. Um, movies and videos uh, doesn't look as bad as I thought. Uh, but you will lose some quality when watching them on the Superbook, and some services don't actually work uh, at all. Uh, now, YouTube seems to work just fine, and I can watch all, all the videos I want through there, but if I tried to use Vudu or Netflix, it started to work, it tried to work, the screen came up, but uh, when uh, I was getting a video on the phone, I wasn't getting any video on the screen of the Superbook, so there's still something there that isn't quite working right. Um, but whatever there tends to be you know, with the with the, uh, the, the, the YouTube uh, there was a little bit more pixelation on this screen than what I saw on my phone uh, but it's certainly usable in a pinch situation but of course if you're planning on using something like Vudu or Netflix or one of those other streaming services it might not work uh, I actually didn't run into any problems using applications in the windowed view either uh, which I was surprised with uh, I have seen some people bring up an app here and there that has problems so there are some issues out there, I'm sure, but for the most part, I was impressed with the compatibility, compatibility level of most of the applications that I ran. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll see if we can bring up a game and maybe a video for you to look at to see what it looks like on here. Uh, you're probably not going to be able to get too good a view of the, of the quality on here, uh, but you'll at least get a little bit of an idea of what you're going to see. Okay, so let's go ahead and try and bring up a game first so you can see what that looks like. Trying to find one that's uh, got a horizontal view to it, so you can see that. And we'll go ahead and uh, use Fruit Ninja here. We'll send that to full screen. And there you go. As you can see, it, it actually looks really, really good. The, the graphics come across really good, and as far as the playability goes, if you're using your phone, it's instantaneous. There's no delay or anything like that. Again, as I mentioned, the only unfortunate thing is depending on which game you're playing, if you're used to using the keyboard and using arrow buttons, or if there's on-screen buttons or anything like that. Uh, certainly, this isn't a touch screen, so you can't use it here. You'd have to use it on your phone. Most of the time the keys don't translate to the keyboard, so you can't use a keyboard, so you have to use maybe a combination of the keyboard and the phone, or just go with your phone altogether. Which is okay, I mean, uh, it would be a little bit better if the cable connecting your phone was a little bit longer, so that you could sit back a little bit more. But uh, other than that, it comes across really good. Uh, the graphics are really good on all the games that I've tried to play on here. So. Uh, playing games uh, from your phone to the Sentio Superbook is uh, actually pretty cool. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, we'll bring up something from YouTube real quick, just so that you can take a look at that. And unfortunately, as you can see, my, my kids use my phone quite a bit, so there are a lot of little kid type things on here. Uh, let's pull up something a little different here. How about uh, something about Godzilla, as I always use, like to use. And how about the trailer for the... Godzilla King of Monsters movie. There we go. Our world is changing. So as you can see, it does come up. It runs. Um, it actually looks a little bit better than the last time I tried this, so maybe that last patch fixed a little bit of things and gave you a little bit better quality coming across the line there. 
Now let's go ahead and take a quick look and I'll show you what happens when you try and run something else uh, from one of the streaming services. In this case we're going to take a look at Voodoo. And we use this a lot for all of our movies. And we'll just try and grab something here real quick that we can find. About Avengers. And in this case here you can see it's running on my phone. But I'm not getting anything on the Sentio screen. I can actually even come up here and manipulate things but I just don't get anything on the screen. So that's a little unfortunate. Hopefully that's something that can be fixed and will be fixed in a later patch. Okay, so there we go. That is the Sentio Superbook. Overall, I stand by my initial assessment that this is really a cool idea that is on the right track to being a very useful device. There's still some things that need to be worked out uh, in the software, maybe some hardware issues as well, such as the trackpad or the screen bleed. But most things should be able to be fixed by a software update or a firmware update. Screen bleed, uh, I'm not sure what can really be done about that outside of sending it in or them sending out a new one, but uh, I don't know if that's something that's actually going to happen or not. The real question is, will this be your go-to device when working or traveling? For me, the big question was, would this be suitable replacement for my Chromebook? Right now, the answer to that would still be no. Keep in mind, I'm comparing a $150 device, shipping not included, to a nearly $500 device. Uh, I've got one of the uh, the Chromebooks, uh, this touch screen, and it can flip over a two-in-one device, uh, more or less. Uh, but uh, certainly there will be a difference in build quality w with that kind of a price difference. Uh, my Chromebook has, like I mentioned, a touch screen. The touchpad works flawlessly. It's always super fast. but it's one more extra thing to carry around, to maintain, to move files between, and so on. So, you know, if they get this thing put together and they get all the bugs worked out and everything like that, then you never know. It, it may be something that uh, I could uh, move away from my Chromebook uh, and, and use this as, as my go-to device. Uh, it has a great potential. I like where it's headed. They seem to have a solid group of people supporting the device and providing information and updates. As long as they continue to support it and keep working on the bugs, I'm very excited to see where it goes. Most crowdfunding projects don't have a good track record, so hopefully this one is different. So that's really about it. That's all I got. Hopefully this video was helpful to you, and uh, I hope to see you again next time here at HyperDog Digital. Hey, this is Scott for HyperDog Digital. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more videos and reviews, be sure to check us out at HyperDogDigital.com. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you know when we put up new content. If there's something you'd like us to review or you have a product you want to send us for a review, feel free to send us an email at reviews at hyperdogdigital.com. We're also looking for sponsors right now, so if you are interested in being a sponsor for our channel, contact us at sponsor at hyperdogdigital.com. All of our social media links and emails are in the description. Thanks again for watching and I hope to see you next time.